reviews, discussions, and theories about films in horror, sci-fi, and genre, this is The Horror Deconstruction. Like, share, and subscribe to hear more. What's up, everybody? It's The Horror Deconstruction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, most likely on YouTube. You don't have to give us a like. You don't have to give us a share. You don't even have to subscribe anymore. It's The Horror Deconstruction <laughs> with yours comp and... Retro... Also known as Danny Dickbags, our good old pal. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is an interesting episode. Uh, just saying goodbye to the year 2023. A very fond farewell to a year that was most uh, precarious pointless. for all of us. Uh, going a little bit through our... a pointless year to me. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. Uh, going through a little bit of things that we saw, little things that we did. Obviously, the show changed dramatically this year. But well, who cares? It doesn't matter. Nobody, nothing matters. Um, so, Danny, did you? I, I, I was looking at our old, 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 old Tumblr. I just looked it up right now before we spoke. Oh wow! <laughs> it was just like, I was like, where are our first episode? And obviously, do you remember our first episode? What it was? The movie Sleepaway Camp. Very good. Very very good. A lot of the episodes don't show up on our YouTube anymore because we and used we to did use- uh, like a. Like a scene slide by, scene. by slide. <laughs> this is when we actually cared. Yeah, this is like uh, it was actually scene by scene. It was like the episode everything. was as long as the movie. Oh yeah, yeah, because it used the sound effects from every scene, and we would just laugh. Oh, it was great, and I would say um and uh, something that I still do to this day through the podcast, mm-hmm. which drives me out of my own mind, and I never edited it out. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, it was on February 11th, I believe, of 2011. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah, so that whatever. Was a, that was a That's long good. time. Was That's that, not is that sad. 13, is that 13 years ago or 12 years ago? You're good with math. Let me know. 12, uh, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Guys. More than 12 years. Like 12 and a half years. Yeah, guys. It's been a 12 and a you know, half year. This, that that, that auto, the ambulance is coming for both of us. There's always but, police on your end. What a surprise. But... Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's been 12 and a half years of doing this show. It's been a wild, long journey. Obviously, we want to um, give a shout out to our our uh, of- official third co-host, um, Horror Harbor. I want to thank her for t- want to thank her for her time for the series. But um, she got offended that I, I would always talk about Justin Trudeau, her beloved leader. <laughs> No, she didn't. So she got mad. She said, I won't take no, this she slander about Canadians. I'm just kidding. No. She went on to do greater and greater things, and she's actually doing respectable things, and I don't blame her. Uh, we love her very much. We care for her, and we. but it was on good terms. Well, yeah. We're all still friends with, with Horror Harbor. We're, we're very cool with her, and we love her very much. We appreciate her. And and her partner and everybody is cool. And all of the Canadians, John, and all Candy, the Canadians, da- uh, Dan Aykroyd, Danny always wants um, to. Danny always bothered Horror Harbor to find him a suitable uh, partner in Canada to marry him. Do not, Kim's uh, convenient. To, um, so <laughs> so we we just wanted to say we we love her very much and we appreciate her time in the show and the show I think was its best whenever the three of us were on together because it felt like. We put our big boy pants on and could talk, and then it was just funny to have her scramble. I was still wearing diapers underneath, though. Having her be incredibly uncomfortable through the show made me laugh more than anything. So thank you, uh, Har Harbor, from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate you uh, you. for being part of the show. Love you very much. Anyway, so uh, any particular thing that we're going to be talking about this episode? uh, Danny, what what do you think were the best movie? Yeah, we were going to name just some of our favorite horror movies, some of our favorite movies in general a couple mm-hmm. of our worst movies and i was thinking it would be cool to just talk about like you know one or two things we're excited for for upcoming movies even though we're sure. not going to cover them why don't you leave that off tell me what we're going to talk about first okay uh i was going to say some of my favorite horror movies Let's which go. i won't you know i won't get into too many because i could go on forever but i think everybody who's into like psychological horror should watch possession the 1981 mm-hmm. movie with sam neill uh, mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> it really nails right. like the feeling of insanity. Uh, I love Hereditary. I know a lot of people don't like it. And I've never understood why. Like I it's don't weird. get that. Like, you would... Yeah, I never understood that backlash for that movie because they're like, oh, it's not a ho- it's not a real horror movie. It's too high brow. What are it's you not, talking it, about? And I'm like, it has jump scares. It's obviously you know it's spooky. It's got weird stuff it's, in it. Like, it's very it, slow moving. It's atmospheric, but like I don't get I mean, people like, who like. I don't get it. 
My I argument for that is like, like if people would see Exorcist, if Exorcist was released now, right? Like nobody ever saw it. They would consider yeah. that because uh, there's that whole boutique horror, elevated horror thing that they put on when people actually, you know, use plot and character development in horror movies now instead of just being jump scares and shit. And that's yeah. what The Exorcist would be considered if that was released now, because The Exorcist I didn't even consider like really a horror movie because it's an act such a good movie, not to belittle a horror movie, but it's like a, an all around like a film. And yeah. that's what it would be. Like I, I would, you know, I wouldn't go as crazy to say like Hereditary is as great as Exorcist, but I love Hereditary, and I love it's Exorcist amazing. obviously, and they're both amazing films. Ever. So this whole backlash, I think, is just some weird like anti-establishment sort of thing. And if you don't like Hereditary for legitimate reason, reasons, that's fine. I, I can't say it's the you know everybody would love a certain movie or not. But it's just like, get over it, man. Like, it's just, even the guy honking behind me agrees, you know? It's just like, the, it's just, Tell it's a horror movie. It's great. It's a horror movie. And Ari Aster, you know, I think was a great gift to horror. We got Midsummer from it. And even to a certain point, Bo, Bo is Afraid has some great horror elements. There's some it. good shit in there, yeah. Absolutely. Very funny uh, scenes. If they cut out like 45 minutes of filler. For what great. people consider Bo is Afraid as his his um, his uh, worst movie, I'd still say it was great. I still I was entertained by it. Yeah, if but that's anyway, the worst movie, you can't you could do a lot worse than that. Like, <laughs> yeah, let's continue. Um, what other movies did you like? So, Old Boy, the Korean one, of course. Uh, yes, I consider that like a must see. Even though I guess that's debatable. Is it hard? Whatever, but it's great. Um, and then, of course, The Thing, John Carpenter. Obviously. Uh, Evil Dead 2 is, like, yeah, always one of my favorites. Good. Very good. But I feel like all of the Evil Deads are good. Like, even the new one, you, I, I like it. Like, it's not as good. You great, know, I just but... mistook. I thought you meant Evil Dead Trap 2. But, yes, Evil Dead 2. Oh, no. Evil Dead Trap 2 is cool. Uh, yeah, okay. But it's not Evil as good Dead as Evil 2. Dead 2 to you. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. One of my favorites forever is Demon Knight. Uh, of Tales course. Crypt, a Demon great, Knight. beautiful movie. Yep. I just rewatched it recently, and I feel like it's amazing. Uh, the Fly is a great romance. Why do you think and Evil Dead Two is better than Evil Dead One? I'm sure we talked about um, it. But why, it just why. amped it up, like it took up the insanity level. Do you think the humor and helped with Evil Dead series? Like that that gave it its unique. I love sort it. Of... The humor is my favorite part of it. That's why I don't really connect with the 2013 remake one. Right, I agree. I don't think the the last two um, entries are as good, but you know, obviously, people argue with it. But they're They'd still have, good. Like they're better. They're still than fine. Yeah, I think they're okay movies. A but lot. like, I think once you kind of remove the, uh, that's why the Ash versus the Evil Dead series worked for me because it was like, it was literally, I have never really seen a show that came from a movie that like a hundred percent was as good as the movies were. And I think yeah. the series did as great as it could be. I didn't think I didn't like. Oh, the there's second some episodes season. in there that are like my favorite things of Evil Dead. Yes, yeah, so, so I thought it was fantastic. I was like, wow, they actually kept you know the DNA that of the actual scene? show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kept it actually pretty intact, and I thought that was great. And it's, it sucks that it was on a channel that nobody has or nobody watches, so it got pirated. Yeah, and that's well, the I think that's the main the reason got it got canceled. Yeah, um, yeah. Two more uh, Reanimator. Yeah, like, great movie. I just love the first one. The others are not good. Yeah. Uh, and I even we are the flesh. Wow. Which okay. Is, I really, That's I don't know. The, I always loved was that. that one. A, a it was very disturbing. Movie or was that, that was a Spanish movie? It was a Mexican film. movie. Okay. It was a Mexican movie. That was um, a total, like, mind trip type of movie. Yeah, that movie is very disturbing. I guess that's the most disturbing on this list, but, like, I don't know. I just loved it. Like, it was really good. That was, like, one uh, of those other sort of um, horror film. Oh, not a, just a, a, a movie in general. Like, when movies started getting a little bit more explicit with sex scenes, they started – this is a very weird uh, point to make. But they started, like, using rubber penises in movies to have graphic oral sex scenes in them. And didn't they do that like, in, like, Boogie Nights first? I've never seen Boogie Nights. I've seen pieces of it. But I remember watching uh, the show The Wire, and there's uh -huh. a scene where, like, a corrupt official is getting oral sex from a woman, and she has, like, a piece of rod, like, a this cute dude's big hog in her mouth. And I'm like, and you know it's, like, a fake penis? And I'm like, I mean, you know, like, I'm not, like, some prude, but I'm like, there's no point to actually show her, like, because she gets scared, so she jumps off, so the wiener's out of her mouth. And I was like, and it's only for, like, half of a, not even half of a second. You know, it's like a frame. 
And I'm like, uh-huh. we know that she's giving this guy a blowjob, but like, I just feel for the actors. Like, this lady has to suck a fake dong, and this other guy has to, like, <laughs> sit there. And then in We Are the Flesh, it's the same thing. There's, like, just, like, a, a very slow motion shot of this. And I, I would guess it's a fake dong, but who knows, because it's Latin cinema. Remember, it's, like, a full shot of her I, with a I big hope schlong so, in her Because there's kids in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, then you'd, like, ru- you'd run to uh, act in, in <laughs> Spanish movies just to get into one scene like that with that girl. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but, um, uh, so, uh, what are what did you think were, like, the worst movies? Um, I put Birdemic. Oof. Because... I've never seen a movie more poorly made. There's points where, like, someone's talking and you hear cars in the background and then the other person responds Shit. to them and it's, like, silent. It's, like, I, crazy. I, I do regret that we never did Birdemic 3, which came out. Um, oh, I didn't even know they made I, one. Uh, it's probably for the best. But I remember in Birdemic 2, uh, <laughs> there was a scene that bothered me more than anything else. And I don't know if you remember <laughs> it. It bothered me more than anything else in the whole film, which had cavemen and all this weird, stupid crap they were trying to make it over the top. There was a scene yeah. where they went. It was uh, I might get what it was that was wrong, but they went to a Coca-Cola vending machine. Remember this? Mm-hmm. And they order the soda, and a Pepsi can came out of the Coca Cola machine, uh, and that infuriated me. And I don't know why. It's like it a scientifically me so devised movie to be as bad as possible. Like it, it was. So there was a terrible. scene. The first movie. There's this like you know it's trying to like vaguely talk about like preserving the earth, whatever. And they have this hippie guy. I think they even say his name in it a few times. Like he's like talking about like saving the trees and then at the end in the credits they call them like you know like tree hugger or so and it, yeah, they right. like use an insulting word towards him and it's like this just like canceled the point <laughs> like, unbelievable oh my god it was so bad and then those cgi birds like honestly i've never laughed that hard i rewound that scene like so many times it, with the it was, cgi it's birds a- it's a, an abomination of a movie. It's There's really like a bad. ten minute like driving in a parking lot scene. Like it shows the guy trying to find parking for like ten minutes. Oh my god! Are there? Are there? Uh, that's the only one that, that that's I, like the worst I actually, of the worst I put, horror movies uh, of all Neon time. Neon Demon also. Yeah, I always wanted to revisit that movie, but like, cause it's funny because like, but it was such a. The story behind that was that we were going to review it, but I, for some reason we just never did it. But uh, I had I always we were wanted both to, just like fed just up. To, I was like maybe I was wrong about this. Maybe I was wrong, and I and I will personally probably rewatch it and see what I think about it. But um, I remember we went to go see the cement, which mm-hmm. is a horrible decision to do because like I had a free ticket, so I was like, let me go see was this. It movie. Like twenty dollars for something. you, yeah. You ended up paying like twenty bucks. So this was an AMC, which is the worst like thing to do. And yeah, why did we do that? And the movie, we were just like, what the hell is this? Cause I, and, I, and I like Nicholas Wendling Reff, and I liked him actually a lot more than just because he's like a stylish director and stuff like that. But Oy, Oyam Gave, what a horrible yeah. movie this was. And and, was. and and I've liked every project after he's done, so it's strange because I, I liked Drive, which was before that, and, every, and um, Only God Forgives, which was before that. But that one was mm-hmm. just like, what is this? It was a disaster of a movie. But uh, I remember he just like both of us walking so out of it. It was so like so. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We walked out of it all like shell shocked. Like it was, it was I've even. I've never more, like, seen we, such a pretentious movie. Like, yeah. and I like pretentious movies. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Same here. And it was just like it oh, was stunning. Speaking of which, a uh, one I forgot. Which Tales I just from the Hood Part Two. Is, no, <laughs> Killing of a Sacred Deer is a must see. Yeah, that was good. That was a very good movie. Uh, uh, what, any is, movies that you're you know, looking towards? Uh, were, there, were there any TV shows that you that you thought were pretty good that you've seen and you thought people should be worth watching, or it's a um, wash for television? Most of the TV shows I watch are actually like feel good comedies, like The Office or like yeah, I Parks and Rec. So I, I, but as far as like movies that aren't horror, uh, uh-huh. I I think everyone should watch um, Adam's Family 1991, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, What About Bob, Groundhog Day. <laughs> uh, Beetlejuice. Fair enough. Uh, any uh, movies <laughs> that you're looking towards, or any books have you read recently that you thought not not even necessarily horror? Actually, um, I'm I'm adjacent. listening to the book that you told me, but I, oh, I, I still haven't um, 
I can't remember what it's called. I'll get to it in a second. But uh, any 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 uh, any movies you're looking towards? Yeah, uh, I'm really excited for Terrifier three. Actually, oh great! I the you like part two a lot, so right? Much fun. Yeah, I good, thought it was good. a lot of fun. And then the new Nosferatu, I'm really excited for. Yeah, Between Two Fires is the name of the medieval horror book that I, I, I you, you got to, you're going to get to listen to. It's a great book by Christopher Buhlman. Yeah. But um, yeah, Terrifier Three, they came out with that promo of him slaughtering a little with child Santa. for Christmas morning. And then I, no, I saw the Santa one with the, he's holding Santa's face. Uh, that's the poster. Yeah, they came out with a little, with a preview, but it's obviously it's none of the footage is going to be in the film because it already caused backlash because it implied him chopping up a little baby girl and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, they're already. I mean, gonna, that's like, the kind of thing he would censor do. it. Yeah, but you know how it goes. But um, I, I think uh, I think it's in good hands. I think the director is getting better and better with his um films. So he's we'll a see. solid villain. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so besides Terrify 3, anything else that you looking for? Nosferatu, because Willem Dafoe's in it, and what's his Robert face Eggers, doing? Yeah. Robert Eggers. Did you see the photo um, of Willem Dafoe on set? He looks incredible. He's like, he's playing like, a, yeah. I think he's playing Van Helsing. Cause he's like a vampire crazed hunter. vampire hunter, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's, it looks good. And the new Beetlejuice, I'm hesitantly excited for. Why? Tim Burton hasn't screwed up since. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tim Burton has only hesitantly. Made good Hesitant, very hesitant. But I, I, you know, if it's good, I'm excited. Like, you know, I love Beetlejuice. Mm. So, and yeah, that's about it. Salem's Lot, also, I'm excited for. Or it still hasn't been released. No, they're yet. talking about releasing this one forever, but I don't think they have yet, as far as I know. That's wild. Um, so let me just say a couple of movies that I I love dearly. I think mo- you named most of the ones that I. I like to talk about. I had a list of like all the horror movies that I really enjoyed. I don't know where the hell I put it. It's really but I know, hard obviously... because it's so easy to choose like fifty movies to recommend. Like I could go on forever. Yeah. But... <laughs> uh, some of the best of all time that I thought, obviously, plus the ones that you've to- you've actually talked about. Um, I-, I loved films like The Gate, which is a nice horror oh, film yeah. with these two boys that open up a gate to hell in their in their backyard. No Roy. Yeah, that's definitely in is... my five stars. Noroi the Curse, which is a Japanese horror film about, uh, obviously, a curse that happens upon the city. First is great. It's, it's from uh, a great director uh, who made also this movie called Occult, which is about this psychopath that wants mm. to bomb Japan and do the willing. The best ending the of willing. any movie. <laughs> it's the, it's a, a ending you can't believe from a movie you just watched, but um, that's great. Uh, so, yeah, Noroi, I'm sorry, yeah, Noroi the Curse. And then there's also, there's that Japanese, Pulse. That's a good one. Pulse is about the whole mm. town of Japan. Oh, that was the ink one, right? Yeah, that was the one where people kind of turn into ink on the wall. And, like, technology was, like, turning people into hikikomori, which is basically you, people that don't uh, interact with human beings anymore. And they just turn to turn into ghosts. It was a really spooky movie. Basically uh, what's I, happening in real life. <laughs> pretty much. I loved it a lot. Obviously, Hereditary and and Midsummer, like I said before. Uh, there's just so many films that I love that I, I you just can't you know easily say what they are. But um, I appreciate all horror movies. They do. Looking towards movies, yeah, I think anything that Ari Aster is going to come out next. Although I think the next one is going to be a western. Uh, so I, by Ari I'm Aster? sure he'll by Ari Aster, yeah. But it's like a modern western. Okay. Whatever he's gonna do, I would is watch gonna... anything that guy made. I'd yeah, watch like great. a commercial for like cereal. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'll make some something weird out of it. Um, uh, for the worst movies I've seen, I think one was that. What was that um, Glenn Danzig movie that we saw? It was this oh. horrible. <laughs> that was one of the mm, worst. Movies. It was like uh, I remember it was cutting back and forth. It was showing like these women that were like sexy blonde women or whatever. Verotic, point. Verotica, uh, I think it was called Verotica. But I, yeah. I still found it. Um, the only point is I could find it funny, so that was okay. So that doesn't oh. make it the worst. What's that Go one ahead. we watched with Kane Hodder? And there's like an elevator shaft. Oh that they're falling yes, down for thank like 20... you. Um, Death House. That that's one of the worst movies I've ever Death seen. Death House is one of the worst movies ever produced in film. Um, <laughs> it's unbelievable how bad that movie is. Death House is it's mm-hmm. it's. I don't like rabid grannies. You liked rabid grannies. The only I mean, part it's about a rabid- terrible movie, but it's like I think Death House is worse. You know? Oh no, Death House might be the worst movie we've ever seen. Um, I saw a movie called. 
it was it called Demonic by the guy who did he did a whole bunch of these District science Nine? fiction movies. District Nine, right? He's great director for those first three movies. He did like District Nine, Elysium, and um, Chappie. I like those movies. A lot of people aren't sure about them, but they like District Nine. But he made a movie called Demonic, and he really needs to fucking like stay out of making <laughs> horror movies because whatever he did, because now he's doing movies based on Gran Turismo, the racing game, and it was funny okay. because. I forgot who the director of um, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, a movie I love. Mm -hmm. He sort of like slightly talked about Marvel movies being boring, which I sort of agree to a point nowadays because I've watched everything Marvel basically except for most of the TV shows. And I was like, yeah, I kind of agree. And the director was like, well, fuck him, you know, uh, Villeneuve, the guy who did Dune and everything. And I'm like, please, this guy's making like demonic. He can't say shit to anybody anymore. This movie's terrible. But um, <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, it was uh, a crazy. I'm excited for Dune. Also, I know it's not a horror movie, but the second one, I can't wait. Two of my uh, yeah, Dune two. Uh, it was supposed to come out, man. It was supposed to come out two months ago. Damn it! But um, also, yeah. Two of my favorite horror movies, obviously based on serial killers, The House That Jack Built. Uh, come on! Oh, I love that one. Lovely movie. I remember seeing it. Uh, I actually saw it with Deckard at a movie at the. I think it was a, a premiere for the director's cut which supposedly is illegal you couldn't see that in theaters it's very weird how movie theaters really? work yeah yeah and i remember um horror harbor hated it <laughs> I, was, I don't know if she thought it was yeah. anti-woman or something but that and obviously american I mean, psycho <laughs> Amer yeah yeah he is the character is in the movie kind of is that way but american psycho obviously uh one of my favorite movies yeah. of all time one of my favorite novels of all time and it's not like when you see the movie, you're like, oh, this is kind of fun in a wacky, spooky way. And then you read the book and you're like, my God almighty, this is one of the <laughs> most grotesque things I've ever read. It really is. Like, it's not, it's still shocking. Like, people kind of consider it mainstream. But it is n incredibly, it's called, there's a book um, genre called Splatterpunk, which I read a lot of Splatterpunk books now, um, which are mm -hmm. like just gross horror novels and stuff like that. And it really is like it really is that disgusting and disturbing. So I would say yes, go go watch that movie. But there's plenty of stuff that I think that we we covered. I think almost like 400 or 500 movies on this channel. But like uh, we we really um, kind of went all the way with this podcast. I'm really I'm really proud of what we did because first and foremost, Yo, I think with this we watched a lot of movies. I wouldn't have watched half these movies probably. <laughs> Same. Uh, Story of Ricky was a great movie that I think we saw that we read. Ooh, we, that was an early one. I love that movie. Yeah, I think that uh, we've seen so many movies, and I'm so proud of what we've done with the channel because, honestly, weirdly saying it, it's like this show wasn't real. To me, the show really wasn't um, about the movies itself, ironically called the horror deconstruction. It was really about sort of me and Danny just like making jokes and you hear in our conversations a very egotistical sort of thing to be like, oh my God, everybody will laugh at what we're saying because we're so funny. But um, I don't care if people laugh. I just enjoyed doing it. Yeah, same here. But <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought that our conversations were kind of cool enough and funny enough that and so weird because we had such uh, weird conversations that uh, people would enjoy it in, in some weird, obscure way. Apparently not, but I still enjoy doing it. <laughs> That's okay. Suicide Club, another great masterpiece. Um, Spring, I loved a lot about the guy falling in love with the woman in Italy. Oh, and yeah. And she turned out to be a, a creature. One. I mean, come on, guys. There's just so many horror movies. I will, uh, I will, you will hear somewhere in this episode, I will list uh, the movies that I think are the best uh, horror deconstruction approved movies you'll listen to. What's up, everybody? Comp coming in here with the list of I think some of the greatest horror movies we have covered on this channel and some we I don't think we have uh, but these are the ones that I think that you your friends would love it's the great horror and weird movie list that we made a couple years ago but it's also updated to have some new features on it thank you for listening to Hardy Construction all this time shout out to Fernando S. De Luca here we go Confessions 2010 Knife Plus Heart 2018 Thesis 1996 Cairo, also known as Pulse, 2001. The House That Jack Built, 2018. Occult, 2009. Antiviral, 2012. Martyrs, 2008. Annihilation, 2018. We Are What We Are, the Mexican edition, 2010. Director's Cut, 2019. Cat Sick Blues, 2015. The Fly, 1986. Itchy the Killer, 2001. Resolution, 
2012, Spring, 2014, The Endless, 2017, The Day of the Beast, 1995, We Are the Flesh, 2016, Evil Dead Trap 2, Hideki, 1992, The Ritual, 2017, A Dark Song, 2016, Tokyo Gore Police, 2008, Jacob's Ladder, 1990, A Record of Sweet Murder, 2014, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, 2014, Dream Home, 2010, Kill List, 2011, Session 9, 2001, The Black Coat's Daughter, 2015, They Look Like People, 2015, The Invitation, 2022, The Empty Man, 2020, History of the Occult, 2022, The Night Eats the World, 2018, Some Like It Rare, 2020, The Innocents, 2021, Sleep Tight, 2011, Spree, 2020, The Golden Glove, 2019, Cure, 1997, Psycho Gorman, 2021, Gretel and Hansel, 2019, The Lighthouse, 2019, Old Boy, 2003, Memories of Murder, 2003, The Transfiguration, 2016, Miss 45, 1981, Hiruko the Goblin, 1991, New Religion, 2022, Visitor Q, 2001, Gozu, 2003, Suicide Club, 2001, Dead or Alive, 1999, Audition, 1999, Fudo, The New Generation, 1996, Versus, 2000, Pontypool, 2008, Schizophrenic, The Whore Mangler, 1997, Perfect Blue, 1997, Haosu, 1977, Friday the 13th, 6, Jason Lives, 1986, Ebola Syndrome, 1996, Under the Skin, 2013, Witching and Bitching, 2013, The Love Witch, 2016, Midnight Meat Train, 2008, Freaks, 1932, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, 1920, Nosferatu, 1922, Adam Chaplin, 2011, Midori, 1992, The Ninth Gate, 1999, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, 1986, The Killing of a Sacred Deer, 2017, Mutant Action, 1993, Suspiria, 2018, The Collector, 2009, Deadstream, 2022, Godzilla Minus One, 2023, and obviously other films like we mentioned before, American Psycho, The Exorcist, The Da, etc., etc. Thank you for listening, and back to the show. What what has been your experience with horror in general, Danny? Like, what do you think about horror and where it's come, where it's you know been, and where is it going? I'm a well, I've been watching it since my earliest memories because my whole family was into it growing up but uh who introduced you to horror movies or was it sort of you by mistake my, my it dad oh, i cool. used to my earliest memory of it is i ran out of the room uh during salem's lot because i was scared <laughs> and then i went back in and like watched it again uh <laughs> so i've been into horror since i'm like like four or something like my whole life um was but, there uh, any individual horror scene that stuck with you from your childhood that you were like, Jesus? Actually, the gate, the oh, scene wow. where um, he has the eye on his hand. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, okay. And I forgot. I didn't know where it was from for years. And then, like, That's I funny. think it might have even been when we reviewed it. It was, like, the first time I saw it. And I was like, oh, my God, it's finally that movie. I found it. Like... Or, I don't know, it took, like, many years for me to uh, find out what it was. That's fascinating. I know, um, I don't know if it was particularly in horror, but I remember stuff that, like, really screwed me up. It might have been probably something from horror, but I remember seeing RoboCop when that guy had, like, acid fall on him and he's melting. And then a car hits oh, yeah. and he exploded. There were so many things, <laughs> like, Fr Nightmare on Elm Street stuff scared the hell out of me. It was just, like, all, all scared. I was scared by anything. I remember when I went to go see Child's Play 3. <laughs> And I almost couldn't even sit in the theater when they were making Chuck. It wasn't even in the movie. Like, it was just the opening credits where they were rebuilding Chucky's doll. And I was like, I gotta get out of here. Like, I was scared. <laughs> or Nightmare on Elm Street 3, when, they're, when the girl's walking around, like, the, you know, she was dreaming about being in Freddy's house. And she was scared. Uh -huh. And, like, you know, and then they pick up this little girl and she ends up being a skeleton. I, I, I am about lost my mind. I had to run into another. The theater. third and fourth are the best ones, by the oh, way. Obviously, yeah, I think the third opinion. one is the best one. Um, <laughs> well, the first any, one's awesome, too, of course. Are there any non horror movies that you uh, feel are, are, you know, the greatest that you've ever seen that you're like, oh, my God, I wish all people would see these movies? Yeah. 
like Tim Bur- a lot of Tim Burton, the Beetlejuice and um, Edward Scissorhands are mm-hmm. like everyone in the world must watch these movies. Okay. And Groundhog Day. Like, okay, great. I don't know why. I just love that movie so much. Oh, great. Um, I, I loved um, Hanging with the Homeboys. I love that movie. <laughs> People don't know that movie, but I've I, never, even it, never seen it. Even you, yeah, because it has a title of like almost like a hip hop movie, but it's not. It's really just about four guys who live in the South Bronx and they go to Manhattan and they're two African Americans and two Puerto Rican guys. And they go to, and it's just like one of the funniest movies, but it feels really like, it feels real. You know, to anybody who lives in New York City, Anybody who's not yeah. rich, it's especially that, and it's just such a funny movie. And it's so good. I, it's one of my favorite movies of all time, and obviously, you know, you know no, stuff like that. Say, is it like is that. it a comedy? It is. It is. It is. It is a comedy, but like, there's some real stuff that happens in it where it's like, like good dramatic stuff in it that happens. And I think you know, although I do a lot, a lot of my favorites are tend to be dramatic. I mean, horror films. Um, I do like to see normal films as well. And I think when horror movies straddle both dramatic and horror, I think that's when it's like really the best. But um, yeah. What what are you? What do you think is going on with the future of horror? Do you think it's gonna go in the line of you know? Because people it seems going like crazy it's getting more like, like, like talk atmospheric to me. and slow moving, which I like. Okay. Like it's way more like artsy now. Like we were talking about like hereditary and stuff, and then like that movie Pearl came out recently, which right. I didn't even like it that much, but it's still like trying to do something cool and artsy. Did like, you like X better then, than Pearl? Or? No, I like Pearl better than X, like, by far. Okay. Uh, and then, like, on the other end, we've got, like, Terrifier, which is, like, just so well right. made and, like, complete And that's independent, nonsense. yeah. Yeah, and I love... I don't know. I feel like we're, like, entering, like, a golden age kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah. I hope. It's funny, because they say horror goes away, but I don't remember when horror ever goes away. So I, I'm kind of like confused when people say that. I mean, it consistently sells out theaters. It's always absolutely. Like, a way to make money. Yeah, absolutely. And I it's think, the only uh, genre of movie where the worst ones are still watchable. Like, I'll sit and watch a horrible movie I've never heard of that, you know, like a horror movie I've never heard of just because it has like a funny looking poster. I, I don't do that for any other type of movie. Yeah. Was there um was there anything that you regretted doing this podcast? <laughs> no. Okay, good. Just Fair you enough. know, I, uh, maybe Personal if I ever like try to become the president or something, like uh, I'll mm-hmm. have to go and delete all these episodes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think we did pretty well with this series. I think um, it, it was fun, and I think that uh, times they are a changing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, what else do we have to talk about with this? So, was there anything really left to speak about with horror deconstruction? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Enjoy your horror movies, people. I think I basically think that's all it is. Enjoy your horror films. Um, appreciate yeah. them uh, because they are a great distraction uh, for from this world because we have no idea what the hell's coming. And it's great to... It's only um, going to be bad. Escape. It's only <laughs> going to be bad. Everything's gone pretty much to the toilet. But um, we, we want to thank all of you for listening. We want to thank you, our, our vocal um, listeners and fans and people that stayed with us all this time. And we appreciate uh, that you gave us an opportunity to speak to you as your friend with this channel. And um, please enjoy a good horror movie tonight. Uh, enjoy a good horror movie tomorrow. Go- enjoy a good horror movie into the future. The genre is put there for you to feel as scared and happy that you're not in the situation that's happening in the film itself. So please take care of yourself and be spooky. Ooh. And with that, Danny, tell me, what's the final word? Putting back your buttocks. Adios, everybody. Adios. Adios.